It's been some time since this video was due. Our full impressions of the Cybertruck following up on several ones we put when the Cybertruck was introduced. In those videos, we had covered its primary specs, its truly unique features like its steer-by-wire system etc. as we gradually learnt about it. In this video, we will try and present a breakdown of its design, its construction and trade-offs therein, its application as a pickup truck and materials and most importantly, its usability case. So let's get into it. The Cybertruck is a unibody design, irrespective of what it's called formally. Seen simply, its frame can't drive away itself without its body, and that's the simplest definition for me. It's all aluminium with stainless steel panels. Accessories for such a body and unique design will all have to come from its manufacturer initially, with no carry forward from a predecessor model, like say a conventional vehicle. It's well known that it's a very radical design, and liking or disliking it is hence very personal. The horizontal signature light bar deceives and pretends to look like a headlight, which it is not. It's simply an accent or a daytime running light. The actual headlights are lower down, both the high beam and the low beam, just under the front trunk opening, along with the small turn signals and some additional DRLs. In the winters, the snow that collects on the rims can affect the performance of the headlights. If you open the trunk, it opens entirely like a shell and explains away the reason to place the headlights underneath which if required needs to permanently eliminate by regulation. There is a forward-looking camera right in the front and plenty of cameras all around. Interestingly, with Tesla's approach to graphically offer parking assistance, it does not offer a 360 view, not as of now. If it would, I can't think of a better car than the Cybertruck to find it useful. The Cybertruck is clearly designed with a cap forward look and that's the reason of the extraordinarily long windshield and the record large windshield wiper. That follows the steep slope again, proving the unibody credentials of the Cybertruck. That slope also then brings the support for that 2500 pounds of payload capacity. The windshield wiper too explains its vertical docking position with nothing to rest upon, unlike what it would have in a more conventional design. With the hood and the windshield appearing in a single large slope, an advantageous position for the aero profile, but on the downside, a lone wiper that large surely is less efficient and not quick enough when cleaning. It would be nice to have some actual users who have experienced it comment and tell us about it, especially those who live in areas with heavy downpours. The sides are very slap shaped with frameless windows and mirrors that are in a pyramid like shape. That improves air flows on the sides for sure. The doors have an electric door release instead of conventional door handles. The stainless steel panels will show ripples and that's simply a given with a body this flat and long. It does not have those odd shapes to do away with them. It's really intriguing how Tesla managed to make something so out of the blue that we now know brings range that's similar to most of the other trucks in the US market. If you have any ideas, please make yourself home in the comments. The Cybertruck has an adaptive air suspension standard like the Rivian. The 17 inches of ground clearance Tesla states on it is in the highest height setting. It is important to remember here that the figure is not necessarily across the frame, but only along the center line of the vehicle. There will be suspension components down there that will be lower. This is important here as this vehicle will be taken off-road and those users may well remember this aspect. 17 inches still is a significantly high number anyway. That figure is probably a composite of proportions as seen from different wheels. This can be seen on the screen in the related menu. The limited use of the rear view mirror is now well documented with the tonneau cover completely closing the rear leaving the user fully camera reliant. I have also noted that the tonneau cover has not quite received the same complaints as we saw in the Rivian R1T. However, I believe it's too early to conclude that the Cybertruck handles the leaves and the dust that get in there better. Though its slope shape in comparison to the flat cover in the R1T should be proving helpful. The Rivian experienced several issues with the tonneau cover and probably even discontinued it at some point. I am not so sure of the details here and please let me know in the comments if you do. In the bed, the Cybertruck has an underbed storage. It has smart, removable separators that expand its usable space and offer convenience when needed. But it's still not large enough to fit a spare tire. It also has a drain plug that enables storing anything that's refrigerated. Underneath the bed are the small backup lights on either side with a hitch receiver in the center and a big plastic aero cover. That receiver too seems a bit too deep inside for comfort. The backup camera does seem perfectly shaped and placed to monitor for safety over the hitch when towing. 
we've extensively covered the specifications of the Cybertruck in our previous videos. You can check all the links in the description. If you like to visit our video on the unique steer-by-wire system in the Cybertruck, that video can be viewed here or in the description, depending on the app you are watching this video on. The 123 kilowatt hour battery in the Cybertruck can charge at 11.5 kilowatt on a slow AC level 2 charger. In DC charging, it could top at 250 kilowatts at least for some time in the charging session prior to decreasing. That's on the existing level 3 Tesla superchargers. However, with its 800 volt battery, the Cybertruck can accept 350 kilowatt on the upcoming level 4 superchargers or any charger capable of delivering the same. And if you would like to see our video on the Cybertruck's battery and its proposed range extender, that video can be viewed here or in the description as well. Nothing is known as of now on the range extender or the additional battery that Tesla has proposed and it's best left alone for now. Or if you want to see our earliest of impressions of the Cybertruck literally from the day it was made available for reservations, you can check that video here or via its link in the description. Tesla's stock specs have thrown many into the bonkers previously and that's because Tesla does not specify motor torque specs. Those wide numbers in tens of thousands in pound feet are measured at the wheels which are post the multiplications through the reduction gear. Those will be similar in other cars when measured thus, unlike as stated at the motors, as most conventional manufacturers do. The ride height of the Cybertruck could prove surprisingly low against perception, particularly when compared to an average half-ton truck. Its entry mode height is even lower to its low ride height mode. That will certainly make getting in and out easy. The seats in the front will feel narrow too, so a normally sized person may not feel it, but a slightly wider individual probably will feel the bottom cushion a bit more tightly fitting. The headroom in the front seat will be the best in the Cybertruck. With that unusual shape of the cab, seats adjusted for a tallish driver will bring it closer to the peak headroom, which will drop dramatically moving behind any further. The Cybertruck has a very flat flow, which makes it great for legroom for all the seats. Some of the other electric trucks that are adapted electric still keep floor space designed originally for the gas variants and their floors are not exactly flat. This feature in the Cybertruck will instantly show in passenger ride comfort. Even the rear bench in the Cybertruck has a distinct bucket seat feel, making it more comfortable. The narrow front seats bring more visibility to the rear passengers and the headroom in the rear looks comfortable. The seats are shaped with a fair tilt and that could probably start showing in discomfort for some with a slope on the tonneau cover behind. That tilt also eats up some space in the cargo bed behind at the bottom, reducing usability there when placing square-shaped things. The Cybertruck Dash is the deepest from those that come to mind. Way deep with the defroster defogger vents right at the end near the windshield, with the first half of the dash made of the injection molded section. There could be a full industry building aftermarket tools for cleaning the windshield from inside and dusting the dashboard, all thanks to the targeted aerodynamics. I have found Tesla A-pillars generally challenging with the extra blind spot they create. In the Cybertruck, I find it particularly concerning with the form of the car and its exterior. When you look at the A-pillars from inside, remember the truck ends immediately after and that would call for some cautious driving, all with the cap forward design. A large structural beam divides the huge glass on the one side, extending from the front seat to the rear seat headrest, and the large windshield on the front. The sun visors are a bit like those on the Tesla Model X that have a two-stage foldback with the vanity mirror on the passenger side. They stick nicely at the magnet in the corner edges. Very functional but also with large open spaces. At the center on top of it are the alternate shifters for drive, reverse, park and neutral in the form of touch buttons along with the hazard lights. That's what you will reach out to if for some reason the screen goes off where the shifting happens in principle. The rearview mirror could be available for the very little opportunity when the tonneau cover is open, which could be really, really rare. The perforated seats have height adjustable seat belts and a fixed height headrest. The doors have ambient lighting for both the rows and plenty of soft touch material. That combines with durable hard plastics. We will only know how good those are in due course when this car gets more mainstream. We see speakers all over the place on the doors, the dash and the sound system in the Cybertruck is really awesome. There are certainly more speakers than those that meet the eye in here. The dash has soft touch material followed by the winds, the ambient light strip and the soft touch material that matches the one on the door. And underneath the dash is the drawer style glove box. The area between the driver and the passenger footwells is massive. 
The center console has the slanting wireless charging mats that appear to be of the same Alcantara material seen on the dash, along with two cup holders and a side of hard plastic. It has some soft touch material on the console elbow rest and a relatively narrow storage underneath. The steering of this vehicle is relatively small in size and appears like a video game function. That's something that users will only gradually come around with. Another convention disturbing feature from Tesla more than anything. In fact, I won't be surprised if this innovation will become a benchmark in the future and much like the center display in all modern cars, a feature that will be default in all cars, with all the criticism and resistance that it will face initially. The steering looks nicely packaged with soft touch material and it has the turn signals on the left side. The lane monitoring system interacts with them and auto cancels them when the lane change is complete. The left side also has a button for the high beam headlights and the multifunction button. In the right of the steering is the windshield wiping button that goes with a button for the cameras, the voice commands and the cruise control indicator. These buttons are sitting alongside the standard scroll wheels on either side. I wonder if at some point these steering buttons will be fully customizable. That will probably also make it easier for users who struggle with the mind muscle memory. The cargo bed like all things Cybertruck is a bit weird. It's not the conventional square and box shape kind. Like stated earlier, the tilting rear seats take out some usable room straight away up top. The portion higher up sticks out even further as it needs to accommodate the closing tonneau cover. All of the design factors could effectively take away about 11 inches of the 72 inches bed when placing the largest boxes. I also noticed that it's a bit narrower at the bed floor than higher up the bed walls. Similarly, the slope of the tonneau cover will leave about 22 inches for the cargo height by the end of the bed, considerably lower than up top. This bed will be larger to conventional pickups in places, but most certainly far less usable for cargo than those. The Cybertruck has two 120 volt and one 240 volt outlets in the cargo bed. The bed walls have a utility belt like feature with LED strips all the way down them that will surely help eliminate the area when needed. The cap forward design has clearly left the bare minimum space for the front trunk. Even with that, the width of the front trunk could surprise most and may actually be more useful with long things like golf clubs. Though in absolute volume, it will be nowhere in comparison to what's on offer in some of the other electric trucks. With an opening lid, getting things in could be easier as well in comparison to say a Rivian R1T. What you see is what you get in the front trunk with no lower compartment. Access to the wiper fluid reservoir is in the corner and a single panel that conceals the HEPA filter for the climate control system is in the front. Aerodynamics have certainly taken precedence over carrying cargo with the Cybertruck. And I think the way you think about the truck matters. Do you buy it for its style, adventure or work duty is an important thing to answer first. There are a number of features that are simply not available on the Cybertruck when delivered. And that's an interesting factor with software defined vehicles. Tesla has been taking its liberties to deliver a car without the promised features, but on the promise of a future update. One notable absence from many Cybertrucks when they were first delivered was the autopilot, which was still missing when making this video. Though there are going to be mixed reviews all over on its range, on sheer efficiency, the Cybertruck should outperform. And even though on the face of it, access to Tesla's supercharger network would hold an advantage, its 800 volt battery, gradually evolving features and the situation with Tesla's supercharger business will be an interesting and relevant thing to keep a watch on and we will be doing it here. As stated earlier, we have plenty of interesting content on the Cybertruck, on things like its towing in comparison to other competitors, its drivetrain, its battery, etc. And the links are all in the description. If you would like to see our full impressions of the Kia EV9, click here or check the link in the description. See you in the next one.